And we are back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Female Esports League Elite Four League of Legends. My name is Riku. Together with me is Foods, and we're definitely excited for our third game of the day. Yeah, 100%. I think we've seen a very explosive game in the first half. Then we saw a very macro-heavy yes. uh, game in the second game. So to right now in the third game, I think we're going to see both worlds sort of collide. We've got our second fastest team against our slowest team of the tournament, the Philippines versus Singapore, Malaysia, and Indonesia. Looking very forward to see how both these play styles match up against each other. Exactly, Mundo. And I think if I look back at the previous uh, FSL that happened around February, uh, I think maybe Daryl has brought this up that none of the uh, previous teams yep. have qualified for this year's, uh, for this uh, portion. So I'm very excited. Fresh teams from their respective regions. And as we take a look at our recap bracket, and at this point, uh, we have already are done. We've already yeah. finished our two games. Yeah, two games, uh, nothing much to see on the board other than uh, what we've already seen today, I guess. Uh, not much to say there. Yep, yep, yep. Top Dino winning their first match of the day. And uh, unfortunately, Li Yab has to play this game coming from a loss up against the first match of the day against Box Gaming. Yeah, and you have to think uh, that the top 10 Dinos, they are coming in off that 1-0 high. It must be very confident yep. coming against... You know, zero one, Leah. Like you said, going to be a bit unfortunate for them. Just have to reset your mental. You have to be ready for anything that top ten downside throw at them. That's true. Uh, it is definitely their first time uh, here, uh, representing the Philippines as well. Uh, they used to be uh, Liab, uh, in particular, used to be called uh, GGTY. Now they have been acquired by the the child <laughs> from uh, the. The, the, the combination of Mineski and Globe, and now they're called Liab. Uh, most specifically, Halia is a Bicolana term for uh, the moon goddess, oh, a okay. female warrior princess. So T I L. Yeah, yeah. All right, learn something new today. All right, okay. <laughs> yeah, just a little bit of fun fact they also have an Arena Valor team, but we are heading on over to our draft again. Uh, Liab coming from the Philippines versus Top 10 Dino from Indonesia. Yep. Malaysia and Malaysia actually, uh, I think Top 10 Dinos actually has players from all three oh countries, yes. so that's correct. very diverse. Uh, one thing that I want to bring out since now we're in Champions League is that Liam has shown that they do do okay, they they do pick unconventional things sometimes. That's we true, have seen. that's true. You know, the Rammers is something I always bring up. <laughs> it's not something it was banned, right? Right? It was yeah. banned earlier. I'm not sure why. <laughs> but uh, they fear the Ramus. The I mean, weak Ramus fear the fear shadows. Everywhere. Fear controls. But maybe them. it is uh, definitely a respect ban. Looking at our current uh, draft oh, at the moment, I saw Kane, Renekton, Fiora. A lot of uh, focus on the top side of the map, most yeah. definitely. Previous game, Top 10 Dino actually devoted all five bands to the top side. So oh, yeah. definitely <laughs> want Yorif to do well in this game. Yeah, I, I heard uh, Yorick is her favorite champion and she was doing this cute little tantrum. Like, she wants to play Yorick. <laughs> but every single time, even during the qualifiers, I believe it's, it has been constantly uh, she banned. She got it once in the first game. She got it once. And she absolutely wrecked. <laughs> That's probably the reason why, you know, Yorick will probably be banned, but looks like that the first uh, phase of the game, it is open, so Red Side can most likely pick that up for herself. Yeah, here's what I'm interested in, though, because Bubby has only... We've only seen her play Kane and Poppy, so... Oh, that's true. Uh, I want to see what new jungler she actually defaults, because we have actually seen that she hasn't played Standard. So, that is something that we... It's, it's really up to preference what she decides to go for right now. And now that both junglers are banned, I don't think you have to prioritize it. You might actually go for the Yorick here. Yeah, definitely. I think they could actually grab Jarvan the fourth here in this rotation, and as well as you're right, the Yorick pick. Very strong picks. Actually denying Jarvan the fourth away from uh, the j their jungler. I, I was looking okay. for <laughs> a particular name, and I got yeah. lost for a minute. It's all good. Um, we do see a Nautilus locked in though, and oh man. We haven't seen Vayne play anything other than this champion, and it's really starting uh, to get me to question whether or not she can play anything else. Well, maybe most likely the other uh, hook-centric champions, m most likely a uh, Thresh, maybe even a Pike in there. Uh, I guess it's actually pretty good because uh, they are also pretty top tier, um, both competitive in the uh, ranked game. Someone banned the Nautilus, please. I just want to see uh, something else. Banned really. The Nautilus. Okay. But we have seen Vortex on the Zaya does pretty well. Um, not as good as Kaisa, but mm -hmm. uh, still pretty okay. On the other side, though, we have seen Silas. And here's something that I want to bring out. Bubby has been practicing a lot of Silas in solo queue. So 
this might actually just be a denial thing. Most likely, most likely. Uh, you're right, uh, still not locking in any sort of junglers on their side. Leona! I believe uh, Leona has been uh, buffed, buffed uh, her Q with, uh, from 5 seconds to 4 seconds, I believe? Or 6 seconds six to 5 seconds. I think 6 to 5 <laughs> at yeah. max rank for something. But uh, Caitlyn, Leona is going to be... Uh, well, if, she, if they don't get an advantage in the early game, I don't think it's going to be very easy for them to transition into mid game. Like, you, one thing about Kaylin you have to take note of is that power trap she does enter when it comes to that mid game. Mm -hmm. And if you're unable to find an advantage, an uh, engaged support like Leona isn't going to be doing you any favors. That's true. And uh, I think it pairs up well with the Caitlyn anyways and Leona. It's just uh, a little bit easy to land in the combo. You get that level 2. At least you have the uh, Ural Snap Trap and then just a ton, ton of damage. But again, with the Ramos ban. I mean, uh, they're, they're spooked, man. <laughs> spooked. What can you say? And here's the thing. Silence actually might be going jungler, jungle right now. So that Ramos ban is really a bit of a waste if he does end up going in that lane. As it stands, though, Silas is a bit of a flex pick as we do see the uh, ferocious Zoe taken off the board. A lot of respect to Ilema. Ilema, a huge, consistent player even during the qualifiers, so I am not surprised if they do want to try to deny some of the consistent picks for herself. Yep. And uh, they are Sejuani, not a surprise here whatsoever. Uh, focus banning on the jungler, uh, jungler position, but it's definitely going to be a bamboozle if ever, you know, Silas is indeed their jungler. Yeah, Silas is actually a pretty strong jungler at mm. the current meta, especially in the late game, so wouldn't fault them for actually going for that. Quick correction though, um, we, uh, it is Amelia backwards, so I think we, is, 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 would it be easier if we just uh, use the, uh, you know. Come again? It's Amelia backwards, oh, that's yes. her name, so... Uh, Amelia, yeah. okay. <laughs> we see the Yorick, though! What, what? There it is! I think uh, T, uh, Top 10 Dino was comfy enough to not first pick it anyway, since they were confident that Liab will probably not ban or deny it at all. And uh, a hover on the Trundle, which was picked at the very first game mm -hmm. from Liab. Uh, I'm not sure if there are any other options. Looks like they are pretty much comfy with this Trundle pick. Yep, we haven't seen. Um, I believe they played another jungler in the qualifiers in oh, another game that they streamed. <laughs> other than Ramus. Other than Ramus, because I'm looking at my notes and I see Ramus and Trundle. Okay, we'll so Ramus and Trundle, <laughs> that's about it. Um, we haven't seen Trundle uh, play the much success, but uh, Syndra for them has been very strong. Absolutely. Uh, one of the consistent picks for Lia. We'll see what is the response. What is uh, their mid lane matchup against Syndra? here for uh, Top 10 Dino. Any suggestions whatsoever? I mean, you saved your last pick for the counter pick. I don't... Ari! Okay, so Ari was uh, used earlier, but on the, uh, on the opposite side of uh, Top 10 Dino. Yeah, Ari's a very uh, popular pick. Yeah. Uh -huh. not sure. She does okay in Syndra. I think it's a quintessential mid lane matchup, as I like to call it. Mm -hmm. uh, all mid laners have to play this at one point or another. But the main thing I want to draw attention to is the fact that Yor Yorick does go to Europe because if you remember last game, she didn't really actually do much until later on in the game when the team already had an advantage. And what giving Yorick does to this player is for, for top 10 dinos, from a top from a two threat team, you uh -huh. now become a three threat team. So it's going to be a uphill battle for Lia if they want to contest this. Silas does go towards the top side, and I do have to question this as well because Silas is pretty weak in the early game, yes. and that just opens up a window for Yorick to punish. I'm thinking what their mindset is here. It's just that maybe they're really confident and prepared against, instead of the mid and jungle synergy, they're also prepared for the top lane threat from Yorick. We'll see, because uh, you mentioned the matchup for Silas. If they win that early, perhaps they can shut Yorick early. What do you think? With Aiko focusing her efforts on the top side instead? Here's the thing, we haven't actually seen Aiko do all that well on Trundle. That's true, that's true. But if you do shut down this Yorick, I do have to start questioning whether or not that pick is going to be able to transition into that 1-4 mm. monster that we see Yurif. We, we saw Yurif play that one time. Yeah, yeah. Definitely a scary pick for Yurif. But uh, I feel like Liab this time around have learned from their... Uh, shortcomings earlier in the first match okay. and uh, that's the reason why they're opting for another trundle but i think the bot lane for sure uh gonna be 
very scary uh, mid game, most especially laning towards mid game for mm. sure. Um, but it will really depend on how they're going to play it out. And we, yeah. And we can't discount Sermon Syndra, really. I mean, if you went back and looked at the qualifiers, I think uh, the Syndra for this player has been, you know, very essential in, into creating the success of the team. And now that she finally does manage to get her hands on this champion, I want to see what she's able to do. She has to step up. Absolutely true. Well, uh, we, this is uh, going to be our first time seeing this matchup, Sermon versus... Amelia. 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 <laughs> I get bamboozled sometimes. It's all good. Uh, uh, Sermon versus Amelia, and I'm looking forward to that because uh, I remember the, during the qualifiers, you mentioned Jacinda on Sermon. Yes, going to be amazing. But how does she face off against... Why <laughs> my memory so Amelia's bad? Amelia, Amelia, Amelia. Do, do whatever works for you, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, how do you think this uh, bottom lane matchup is going to go, though? Like, uh, Caitlyn, Leona, Leona, I am a really a huge fan of this. But if you add in the junglers, I have to hand it for top 10 dinos. They have a more reliable engage. Yeah. But is there any sort of chance that Yab can uh, pair it up with a Trundle? Yeah, 100%. I think uh, Zbabi likes to go bot lane early. I, mean, I think we saw that last uh, game. Yes. And if they do manage to find that pick, it's going to be very devastating for Caitlyn Leona, especially since we did bring on the point that Caitlyn Leona suffers in the mid game if they don't get a hit. And yes. that's the key. Caitlyn Leona, they have to get a hit. Leona has to facilitate picks. And I think if she's able to protect Caitlyn from any hooks and, you know, even get one, uh, one, good, one good hook on Saya, yeah. I think that's how, you, that's how you win this lane. Yeah, it's going to be a scary, scary lane for sure. But you know what? I think uh, we are ready to check out the profiles first before we head on over to our match. Ladies and gentlemen, for Game 3, the best in one series between top 10 dinos from Indonesia against Liab from the Philippines. Alright, hopefully we don't see any more shenanigans of, uh, you know, the mid laner walking up to face check <laughs> that push. It's going to be very painful if they try to do that again. But alas, I don't think they're going to try at all. Yep, lesson learned definitely from the uh, first game, I believe. Uh, and uh, we'll see, though, because uh, earlier when the Yab uh, drafted their own composition, it was more of a 1-4. They had the Orc advantage already, but now that they have the Silas pick, I think it's going to be a different dynamic this Minions time around. Uh, I, think that, I think that changed for the better, because mm -hmm. if you actually cast your mind back to that game, they drafted for the 1-4, they drafted for the 1-3-1, but they actually didn't try to play that style at all. They just yeah. went for the constant team fights. So going for the Silas, going to these late game team fights, they're going to come on a much better position. That's true. And uh, you're right, there's not going to be any sort of uh, funny business in the early phases of the game. Uh, uh, I do agree with what you said, though. This seems to be more of the Yav play style. They really want the 5v5s. And uh, on the other side of the spectrum, uh, their four man from uh, T10 is actually pretty good as well uh, with the Jarvan and as well as a lot of CCs and a lot of, you know, even balanced out sources of damage, uh, AD and AP. So. Uh, definitely looking forward to this finishes later on. Yep, cheeky invade coming in from the Jarvan though. I don't think she's going to be able to sneak this away before Trundle pops up towards the blue button. Placing down she a ward. Knows. Yep. Not even finishing the last wall. Of course, making sure that the uh, the buff is safe. And uh, Spavi will decide to go away. Yeah, Spavi des decides it's not worth contesting. Did have enough help to do so, just walks away. He's actually trying to gank in the mid lane. Didn't go very well, though. 
Yep, Suri. Uh, quite extended already with Emily having that priority in lane at least. Uh, that allowing Sir. Oh, wait. Bottom side though. Fluffy's so low. Yeah, and Vayne has no summoner spell, so I think there was an all in. There was definitely an all in. Uh, I think this is exactly the correct play. I mean, you are, you, especially level one, you do want to harass Fluffy and then before you reach level two. The idea of the player is correct, but oh, I'm going to hold that. <gasps> Wait, no, oh, no, 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 okay. Uh, okay. Too so, excited. Yep, too excited. Uh, well, I think the idea of the play was correct, but mm -hmm. it's only a good play if you kill Caitlyn. As it stands, you have to run out of the flash for the Oculus. This is going to be a detrimental to you if you try to go in again. But Jarvan is visiting his spot lane, though. And uh, it seems to me Iko's not going to be around. Nope. Three last uh, caster minions before they do the dive. Here comes S. Bobby. Walk slowly. There's the Navi's going to time the tower hit back to S. Bobby. First blood, super clean, but an exchange death for Liab. And that's going to be a one for one at the bottom side of the map. And that's absolutely worth. I mean, you trade your jungler's life to put this Caitlyn behind. The kill goes on to. Uh, Leona and Kaylin doesn't even get the assist but I'm gonna hold that as we see mid lane. Oh, Pillar, Charm will actually hit, but looks like Aiko and Sermand is not gonna fully commit to that. No, uh, actually one summoner spell has been burned. Yep, just a flash to get out. Um, wait, that flash was burned earlier. Earlier, <laughs> yeah, earlier. yeah, yeah. Okay, but uh, overall, things stay pretty stable. Uh, like I was bringing on the point, I think Kaylin right now is in a pretty bad position about a wave down and you don't even get assist gold off that kill, so very unfortunate. Maybe a bit of a tilter. Yeah, definitely. Not even uh, burning the flash in. Uh, S. Bobby will actually blow out the uh, first summon kills. But again, here at top side, it's everywhere. And they're going to stop once again. Uh, I really like the exchange between these two junglers. Yep, definitely. Uh, S. Bobby likes to play towards the top side, so Aiko's like, I'm going to go towards the top side. And I think you really absolutely have to because Silas, we taught, we touched on this earlier, but she is really very weak in the early game. So yes. Aiko coming up to, you know, prevent Yuri from running away with this lane is proving pretty crucial as we do see Jones right now getting pushed under turret again. Yep, Suri, and, uh, and you're right. It's absolutely the uh, normal thing to do to focus your efforts, your jungle efforts, on the upside, on top side, in mid. And meanwhile, uh, for S. Bobby, she'll have the time of her life Especially at in the bot lane, as uh, the Caitlyn and the Leona duo is constantly being harassed. Uh, teleport gonna be used for both of these uh, top laners, and now a lot of wards and vision at the bottom side of the map. Yep, no more teleport for Jones nor Europe, which means both these junglers are gonna have a much better time going towards that bot lane for any sort of shenanigans. And you have to think Jarvan is going to try to revisit that lane again. You want to put this Caitlyn much further behind than just 0-1-0. Absolutely. And I feel like, you know, Fofi without a flash, without a heal, and uh, only one mobility skill, uh, I think it's the correct play to take advantage of that fact. And maybe they can transition to Dragon afterwards. Yeah, absolutely. Five minutes is an Ocean Drake. This is a very, uh, I'm not going to say crucial, but mm -hmm. very beneficial Dragon to have this early on if they do manage to pull off a gank. But as it stands, um, Jarvan is visiting towards topside jungle. Uh, definitely understandable. Uh, both uh, mid laners and top laners have priority at the moment. So if ever a fight does arrive, uh, top 10 dinos will have that advantage. Now that's a good deep ward, and we're beginning to see top 10 dinos begin to set up a bit of a vision line around that Baron pit for possibly a sneaky uh, steal of the Rift Herald once it comes online. Definitely, but we're gonna see a gank here in the Whoa, mid lane. What? Aiko will not have a successful gank as uh, quite far away, and Cement will be eliminated. Uh, Amelia just managed to pick up their solo kill pretty easily. Uses his ignite and all of the mana bar really, but that one zero zero is gonna feel so good on this Ari against that Syndra. Yeah, definitely. The moment Emily reached uh, level six, it was designed to pull the trigger. Instead, go win. I keep in mind, we did talk about Sermon being, you know, the player that has to step up yes. for Liap to win this game, and being put behind this early on in the game isn't looking pretty well. It is looking grim uh, for the early game uh, with the Yab, especially um, a lot of plates. Well, just one, not a lot, just one plate for Yurith, but in terms of impact, that will really uh, give Jones a difficult time at topside. 
that's a one plate and 20 CS ahead. I yes. mean, didn't we just see, you know, Jones teleport top to get back and now he's walking, walking back up again? Back. I, yes. I'm not sure what happened there, but uh, it's really just getting bullied out by Eurif, and this is why you don't give Yorick over the top 10 dinos. Yes, Eurif is super comfy with that Yorick pick. Yeah, she mentioned earlier it's her favorite champion, and uh, the mastery is definitely there. Really uh, spotting out Den with the jungler. Gonna cycle back, hopefully uh, T10. We'll see if they can take advantage of the fact that uh, Leona was walking back earlier. But it looks like they're gonna settle with just wave management. Yeah, you can see at the moment Jarvan and uh, actually both junglers are towards the bot side, so you might see a bit of a shenanigans going on with that uh, dragon if any of them decides to try something sneaky as it stands. I think uh, uh, Liab definitely has the vision advantage in that bot side river, so top 10 dinos definitely have to be careful when traversing that area. That's true. Uh, for Den, uh, because of the roaming earlier and uh, the constant harass, I feel like uh, uh, T10 bottom lane will definitely reach level 6 first and they can uh, time that well with the Jarvan here later on because uh, Den was level 4 earlier, just a few seconds ago. Top side. Yeah, the goal lead is already about 1.5k and the, the scoreboard doesn't reflect that at all. I mean, three kills and the gold lead is this far ahead. Yeah. Top 10 Dino's doing pretty well with that CS lead, doing pretty well to force Liab out of their lanes. Definitely in control here. Aiko gonna play in the pillar. Nice charm, nice land here from S. Bobby. He is gonna be forced to use S. Bobby so low. We'll see one hit and that's gonna be over for the Jarvan. And meanwhile, Ailama still has the ult and that's gonna be a return kill. One for one in the mid lane. One for one in the mid lane. That was a pretty good return. Oh, here we go again. Uh, Sermon still very brave to approach this fight. Charm's gonna kid, but one fourth HP already because they're brave. Den is around the corner, and that's gonna be an awesome kill here by top 10 dinos in the mid lane. What? Amelia right now stepping up like crazy. I mean, 3 0 and 0 right now on this Ari just stomping not only Syndra, but Aiko as well. That was. I cannot, well, I can pretty much count how many times Aiko tries to make something happen in the mid lane. It's just that Ella, the mid laner of T10 is just really amazing and they're always uh, watching for uh, these types of aggressive plays. Aggressive plays. Aggressive plays, and as I said, and at this point, they're focusing on Kofi at the moment in the bottom lane. And at this point, Vortex is half HP. Liya will decide to just not pursue that anymore. Yeah, take a look, you're forcing the Caitlyn out of the lane again, and right now, top 10 dinos have three winning lanes. It's just gonna be so much more difficult for Liya to come back. Definitely hard. Uh, not sure if T10 wants to dive this one, but then again, we did mention, um, not level 6 just yet. Was uh, delayed for a little bit, and there's a stun coming in. Uh, Vayne gonna get the uh, turret aggro. Yep. But yeah, that was the. I feel like that was the problem earlier. Yep. At the moment, though, uh, they're not gonna be having a good time defending against both uh, both laners in the bot side. As we do see a bit of action at top. All right. Uh, at least uh, for Liab at this point, the wave is shoved in their favor. Wave is shoved. Wave. <laughs> wave is shoved in their favor at this point. But that would mean uh, Jones will be. Uh, We'll be open for games. Yeah, at the moment, this is like the first time we've seen Jones push up. He's just gonna get jumped on again. Jumped on again, indeed. But the focus is here on the Jarvan as Bobby's gonna fall instantly because of the burst. And we have Amelia just running back in with the charm with another revenge skill. That's another one for one exchange in the top lane. Yeah, it just really feels bad, man. Like both these junglers, I mean. It's Bobby right now. I mean, is, is the answer to this jungler just banning out Poppy and Kane? It's not doing very well on this Jarvan. That's true. And oh. uh, another fight at the top side of the map. Sermon's gonna instantly die here without getting a return kill. And Jones decides to back away and respect that there are three members in that area. Alright, you're zero 3 The opposing lane is 4 and 0. You do not get to play League of Legends anymore if you're <laughs> Sermon. <laughs> this, is, this is harsh, man. This is quite uh, brutal, but it looks like Den. Wait, what? We'll get the Zenith Blade in. Looks like they still want to go all in, but that will be not the best decision as Den will fall. And I mean, that, what, what can I say there? I mean, that's just what Liab has been doing all day. They always want to look for these fights, and this time, 
uh, Dan just really just uh, overstepped boundaries, and top 10 Dino are there to collapse on him. And what this means is top 10 Dino secure first turret, a ton of plates, as well as that Rip Harrow. Getting a lot in the map here. Uh, top 10 Dino is doing a great job from bottom lane mid to top. They've been dominating this first 10 minutes of the game, and it's actually insane. Actually insane indeed, and right now Syndra is actually forced to stay in this lane unless they go for a lane swap, because if you can take a look at the tower, that is not a very healthy tower. So the moment Sturman walks out of this lane, if top 10 dinos decide, hey, we're going to seize on this turret, there's nothing Liev can do to stop them. That's true. And uh, top 10 dino has complete control of the riverside at this point. So yes, you're absolutely right. It's super risky to try and uh, send a little, a little bit in that lane. And you are uh, very open to gank with one plate left. Uh, especially with a Jarvan, but now they're focusing on that uh, bottom side of the map, for sure. Alright, um, I'm actually not sure if this Rip Herald is going to make it to turret before the plating expires. Actually, I might get one charge here just in time. This will be a decent chunk of gold going over to the side of top 10 Dinos. Yeah, gold for sure. At least, uh, whoa, Charm? He's gonna connect to Jones. We think they're gonna make something happen, but that's gonna be the bottom lane Zenith Blade and the stun attacking Vortex. We'll see if it's gonna be enough oh. as the ult from the Leon is gonna hit. And here comes Jones in the back line. They're gonna eliminate as Bobby and as well as their AD carry Vortex. There's only one left. We have Baney here on the Nautilus. Stopwatch. Not sure if that's gonna help, but here comes Amelia in the bottom side of the map getting that revenge. Charm's not gonna hit, but at least we got, we saw a three kill at the bottom side of the map. But you're in the meantime, split pushing. Yeah, you, uh, Liang thinks, yeah, we, we got this fight. We're gonna teleport bot side and we're gonna clean it up. And we're gonna get back into this game. But unfortunately for them, with the arrival of Ari, they don't have the ability to answer the Yorick split pushing at the top side. That's both turrets gone from top. And it just really stinks oh, for Liam. Super duper. At this early, at this point of the game, using uh, your inner and your outer as well. Uh, but Liam will make the most out of the situation. We'll get a dragon, we'll get three kills, kills, and we'll see what they do with that gold and with that dragon. Ocean Drake at this point in the game isn't exactly the best Drake, the most uh, beneficial for them. Especially when top 10 dinos already have this much damage on their side. Anyone on Liam is just going to get popped before Ocean Drake kicks in. They're not going to have any effect. But sure, uh, the gold, I guess, is the main thing yep, you're going to get from there at this point. Yep, sorry. Right, uh, the laning phase is uh, over because of Urith. No, I'm kidding. Because a lot whoa, of... <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> and uh, Urith, again, pretty happy with this result, of course. Uh, going to stay in that top side. Going to be that annoying distraction. You can see her in the screen right now. Honestly, at this point, if you want to force that lead, I think swapping Yurif to that bot side is one way you can do it. I mean, Yurif right now is perfectly capable of one lead doing, yes. and I think she can take that turret without much issue. Just sending your, top, your bot lane towards top side and catching a few waves, I think that's one way you can go about doing it. That's true. And uh, at this point, the up will really have to force maybe one or two members to fully eliminate Yurith's threat. But then again, uh, Top 10 Dino really utilizing their lead will take something away from you across the map. And that's uh, like the up. Oh, problem. what is this? Oh, wait. Engage. Gonna trap them all inside this dome. And uh, just gonna skidoodle away. Good job. Yeah, well, that was a good distraction from Jarvan. Just Taking up both of those, uh, both, both both players' time, so that Amelia had the ability to take down that mid lane turret. And now, top ten dinos, they've opened up the map. They can move their vision line forward, and Liap, they just cannot step into that river at all. Man, oh man, uh, I bet gonna remove all of uh, Liap's vision again. Uh, T10 conquering most of the map's territory or Liap's territory rather, and. Uh, not quite sure how they are. Most likely, they will be on defense mode. Uh, not a lot of options for now. You absolutely have to be on defense mode. I mean, your 4k goal behind yes. and 16. That doesn't seem like much, but in this tournament, it's actually quite substantial. And outside of top 10 dinos making, you know, any sort of mistake, I don't think Liab is going to have much of an opportunity to get back, especially when your main playmaker, again, Sermon in the mid lane is 0, 3, and 1. Amelia, definitely a hard uh, player to go against with. 
especially with her track record in terms of consistency in the mid lane. Uh, I think a lot of uh, highlight plays uh, from Top 10 Dino, especially when you combine when you combine her with the synergy with S Bobby, really beautiful to watch. Bobby right now, not exactly having the best game, but uh, it's it's her scoreline doesn't reflect this, yeah. but it's the things that she's been doing. To, you know, like distracting so that we get to take that tower and counter ganking. I'm gonna hold this point. Though. Oh, wait a moment. Looks like Vortex is gonna fall from a collapse of Liab, probably at the wrong end of the uh, the lane. Yeah, Vortex, I'm not exactly sure what she was doing there. There wasn't a minion wave. Maybe she was just watching or uh, walking rather from the bot side to join the team at the top side. But an unfortunate pick just allows Liab to take this tower. And this is the sort of mistake that I was talking about. They don't, they don't equalize the goalie, but at least they get something back. Wow. Oh, they actually don't get the turret, so it just yeah, feels bad. Yeah, I was about bad. to say. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, good defense and another from Yurith, another tower down. And again, uh, for the Yab to be, because they're behind, they really have to invest a lot of members to crush top 10 Dino. But then again, if it's not successful, you have Yurith just quick pushing in the sidelines. Yurith right now, uh, this is... Again, this is why you don't give her Yorick. Yeah. She's just got to split push all game. And honestly, with the intelligence that we've seen her play Yorick before all this, it's just going to be very difficult to shut her down. Absolutely, absolutely. And uh, Jones, uh, we'll have to see uh, whether or not this game can uh, turn out for the better because uh, this lead is humongous. Uh, five, especially, on, uh, especially on Amelia with a 5-0-1. Yeah, we talked about Yorick uh, being stronger in the in the late game, and right now it's one zero and three. Sure, you can ramp up, but the real question is whether or not ramping up into that late game, you're gonna have enough of an impact to really turn this game around. That's true. I mean, you did pick up uh, uh, Caitlyn and Leona for being aggressive from lane to mid and do really reliable engages. Uh, but what do you think here? What do I think here? I think top 10 Dino would really have to begin, you know, forcing this lead. I think we pointed out this, uh, this issue last game where they don't force their lead well enough. Mm -hmm. And at this point, this is the best best point in time where you can actually still go in. Syndra's super weak, Caitlyn's in her power drop, and Silas hasn't ramped up to his full potential just yet. So if your top 10 Dino, you really have to go in. And I, taking the dragon, sure, but it's not the optimal play here. I, I suppose if they want to do yeah, you're right, you're right. That's true. But again, I guess they're they're taking it because they want to deny it rather than taking it for themselves. That's fair, that's fair. I mean, two oceans isn't all that much better from one, but uh, a denial a, den a denial takeaway off that ocean drake is still pretty valid. Yes, really, but now there's a burger here in the mid lane, and now it's going to be potentially a 5v5 because you're at this actually nearby. He's gonna take this tower. Let's see who pulls the trigger. Yeah, you're being here is actually the intelligent play. I mean, you don't really as expect to be able to push into that base with mid tier 2 towers That's still true. up. So joining the team right now uh, to prevent any sort of uh, mistakes mm. is really the best play that Yurif could have done. And props to her for recognizing that. That's absolutely true. Uh, I mean, the Yub does have a scary Engage. They do have a lot of options, a lot of PC, and uh, of course, uh, top ten Dino is completely careful about that. Be very careful about that, indeed. As we do see Leah beginning to, you know, ramp up. I think uh, right now, what they're doing, they're stalling out the game. That's exactly what they want to do. And the onus oh. is still seriously on top ten Dino to go in like this. Oh, let's see though, Demacia. As Bobby screams, and uh, then we'll just expend a flash for safety. But that's a, that's gonna be, you know, Leona not having a yeah. flash play available. Yeah, it just limits the options that uh, Lee have for engaging. And it's not like they have a lot of options. I mean, that's true. Yeah. What, what are you gonna do? Jones jumping in? I, that's that's the best you can do, really. Other than then, you know, landing the ultimate and. That's, yes, yes, from Sermon, of course. Uh, scatter the weak stun with a dark spear. Then uh, at this point, uh, we see that. Uh, oh wait, we thought that's gonna be a full-on engage, but then again, uh, still pretty painful. This Yurith. Honestly, if Yurith gets an engage on Jones, it's Jones' fault for not backing off it fast enough. 
That's true. Uh, you know, tower already. Uh, you know, in a tower already. But yeah, Yurith can just pretty much get all the resources in the lower part of the map and uh, really distracting Silas. Both of them do have teleports. But at this point, I think it is really risky. Uh, I think Liab is just waiting for them to start Baron and find an opportunity. Yeah, right now they are just uh, wandering around that jungle, actually not clearing out wards or anything. So just a bit of wasted time. Not exactly sure what they're trying to accomplish at the moment. Since now that they're gone, Liab's just going to walk in and clear the division that they tried so hard to put down. And uh, yeah, they are removing all of the vision. A lot of respect still from Top 10 Dino against the Yab in the Riverside. Mm -hmm. But then again, there is still the problem in the, uh, the bottom side of the map with Yurith still split pushing and keeping Jones busy. Let's take a step back though. Remember that 4k goal lead at 16 minutes? Uh -huh. Well, it's still 4k goal lead and it's now 23 minutes. The window for Top 10 Dino to make a play is actually beginning to close and they really have to step up. They really have to understand that they can go in or sooner rather than later, they're not going to have their window anymore. I mean, I think Top 10 Dino is, uh, really wants to surgically remove the, uh, the structures of Lia. But you're right, I mean, there is still one outer turret or inner turret left and they are hesitating a little bit on the Baron and I wonder who's going to pull the trigger first. Yeah, absolutely, I think. Going for the Baron now is a bit of a 50-50. Mm -hmm. I don't like it, but I don't dislike it either. Trying to sneak it away, they do have vision control over the Baron, but they don't know that. And if Leah actually managed to get in, and, you know, at this point, they, plan they have enough damage to go for that fight, yeah. it's just going to be, you know, very unfortunate, very detrimental for top 10 Dinos. Yep, certainly. And uh, if I if I were in uh, Liab shoes, I, I do have a couple of options for sure. I think this is what's going on in their heads. Either they want to probably jump on Yurik when she jumps on Jones, but then that's probably the time they're actually very wary of top 10 dinos mo making moves at the opposite side. Yeah. At this point, maybe Liab is just waiting for something to happen, but just as I said, this is probably it. Yeah, absolutely, yo. Yurik is actually gonna not get collapsed on. Props to Liab for not taking that fight, understanding that if they do go for that top 10 Dino, get a free Baron. As it says, Yurif is backing away, but top 10 Dino are actually gonna start the Baron up. Teleport available for both of these top laners. We'll see though, that as they decide to just back away and respect the fact that Liab is near the area. Yep. Yurif is actually just gonna re resume yeah. the push. <laughs> He's like, I'm relentless. <laughs> I mean, it is the correct play. Uh, it's yeah. kind of sort of like a rinse and repeat sort of thing. Like I'll jump onto drones, and then if ever the Yab decides to invest certain members at the, at the bottom side of the map, then that's the time they go for Baron, and then they'll probably stop if the Yab goes too near. Yep, a very familiar scenario. Yeah, props to Liab actually for, you know, stalling this game out. This is exactly what they want. Like we said, they want to scale up past Caitlyn's power drop until, you know, Silas gets enough damage. So. What they're doing here, they're stalling out this game. That's exactly what they want to do. And the longer this game goes on, the less that 4K goal is actually going to be. Oh, and look at that. Might be a potential pick off. And there's as Bobby jumping right in just to escape. And we have Den actually trying to lead the charge as well. We've got three kills. Make that four. The Yab getting all and everything except for Yurith, who's split pushing at bottom side. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the Window has closed for top 10 dinos. Liab's gonna pick up this Baron, and with that objective, they should be on at least equal footing for the next fight. And top 10 dinos, they have to play very carefully if they want to get back into this game because they are behind right now, make no mistake. You're right, and uh, how will they utilize this uh, Baron buff that they have acquired? I mean, it's a good move, but then Yurith is there again, slowly whittling away the base of uh, uh, the Yab, and especially if they do get the inhibitor, it's going to be an extra problem. Yeah, with this Baron buff though, it's going to be so much easier for Jones to answer it, just going to push up that minion wave, make it so much harder for Yurith to actually push towards, you know, that base, and I think this is, you know, something detrimental for Yurith actually, because she was actually so good and sprint pushing, now that she doesn't have anything to do, nothing to take on the map, 
that's, that just caused the detriment for me. You're right. Like, how is Top 10 Dino going to adjust with the circumstances now that the Yub, after being super behind, I mean, now it's quite even. It is quite... Actually, no. It's even. At this point, because of Baron buff uh -huh. and because Mia is scaled so much better, mm -hmm. they are in an advantage. Sure, the gold is even, but the ability to fight is lost. Oh. But that's a flash burn. That's a small victory for Liab. Knocking down towards the uh, turret here in the mid lane. If you're uh, going to do the split push, we'll see though if Liab wants to force his 4v5. Again, Yurith still has teleport. And you can tell Top and Dino they're a bit frazzled right now. And add to that the fact that Jarvan no longer has flash, doesn't have that uh, long range engage option anymore available to them. That's true. It's going to be so much more difficult for them to find a favorable fight. And uh, I really love what Liab is doing right now. Uh, maximizing as much as they can the Baron buff and take out structures from the, uh, from the laning phase that happened earlier. But Top and Dino, this is their response. Yep, and Power Barrel Recall is actually going to do them so much of a favor. I think they should be able to get to their mid lane turret just in time. And top 10 Dinos are forced to back away. They cannot contest. We'll see though. I mean, top 10 Dinos is probably one of those teams that really is uh, effective. Well, not effective, but they can play from behind. But it will really depend on the composition as well. I mean, they did come from the lower brackets during the qualifiers, so their fighting spirit is definitely there. Talking about talking about lower qual uh, brackets and qualifiers, though, uh, I think we do have word that the fact that they dropped into lower qualifiers, uh, lower bracket, was yeah. actually because they overestimated their opponents. No, underestimated. Their underestimated. Opponents. And that actually might be happening here. Hmm, that's an actually that's actually an interesting uh, theory. And, but to your previous point, I think you are correct. Top ten dinos, they are a very intelligent team. They can make these macro plays that really benefit them. But right now. The sheer force that Liam are bringing to the table just seems to be way too much for them to deal with. Going in on Jones though. Uh, Jones still lingering around and look at the heels. Very thick heels. Stealing the ult, but the, here comes the rest of the squad of Liam. Here comes the ult of Kate. That's gonna be a shutdown towards Yurith. Taking advantage of the solo Yurith in the bottom lane. Yep, solo Yurith. Yep. Very smart. Un up until that point, able to back off, but. Right there, being caught by the entirety of Liam just allows them to continue pushing and this, this inhibitor should actually just be gone in the whole fight. Top 10 <gasps> Dinos cannot contest. 30 seconds on the clock for Yurith to spawn. We'll see if Liam decides to respect and go away or do they push this in. Great job here by Amelia. Just chunking down just to scare them away. And uh, at this point, I suppose that is the correct play uh, as there is more or less 10 seconds on the clock. Oh wait, never mind! They're gonna get another shutdown! An exchange, if you will, between top laners. But the difference is, you're that's gonna be alive and that's 50 seconds on the clock for Jones! Yeah, what are they going to be able to do with this 50 seconds is the question. Neutral, neutral objectives are not on the map. Yes. Well, the only thing they can go for is that mid lane turret, which Liap should be defending with their, all their lives right now. Very tricky, very back and forth though. The difference is, uh, inhibitor uh, already destroyed for the bottom side of Top 10 Dino. It's gonna be tricky if they do want to keep coming the wave. And at this point, maybe the Ari's gonna fall. There's the Ignite stopwatch gonna be used. Zonyas, rather. But there you have it. Eliminated. The mid laner of Top 10 Dino is eliminated. And at this point, you see S. Bobby trying to save Vortex. Or using the ult, Ico still on the chase. But Vayne is actually nearby. Force to use a flash. And there you go, another teleport by Jones. And 10 minutes ago, that fight would not have gone the way it went. And we really, 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 I cannot stress this point enough. Top 10 Dinos, this is their fault. They stalled this game. They allowed Lia to come back into this game. And really, at this point, save for another pick like what they found on Silas, there is no way for them to get ready. Wow, wow, Liab with uh, with her plan in draft. No wonder they were confident. All they had to do was uh, keep stalling. And with that said, it's now Topsy Turvy Land. We're getting two towers in already in the mid lane and uh, the top side. Yep, that is going to be all three inhibitors going the side of Liab actually. 
very difficult from top time Dinos to even step off their base right now. It's just well, Euros is good. Euros gonna try. So, oh man. Okay, so so the app is forced to just respect the fact that Euros is gonna knock on the base again, and uh, probably too scared, or maybe thought it was too risky to jump on 4v5. But if they lost that, then Euros will end the game. Well, end the game is a bit of a. Uh well, hyperbole, I think, that's at this true, point. That's true, that's true. You have your inhibitor up, and uh, you got super minions in the bot side. But what uh, what Yurif has done for Top 10 Dinos, with whatever this is, Oh, yes, is uh, open up the Baron for them. That's absolutely true. I mean, it is uh, going uh, quite fast here in that Redemption on 4th HP. They're going to spot them all out. We'll see, though. There's the Scout of the Week. There's the Stun in. Everybody trapped though. Here comes the rest of the members of the up. They are targeting Vayne. Vortex might be all alone after Vayne falls. And that's one for HP. There's feathers fly, Vortex says. But unfortunately, there is a lot of members around from Liab. That's three members down for Top 10 Dino. Now it's a 5v2 with all inhibitors off the map for Top 10 Dinos. It's just going to be so difficult for them to clear out these waves, let alone when the Baron and Power and the Ambience come into the base. You have to think, this, this should be the end of the game. 30 seconds of Vortex. That's your primary wave clear option. Oh, here you go. As Bobby was trying to buy some time, they're all from the Leona. Let's see if it's going to be enough. Jones, very, very low. Let's see if, there's, if they will respect that. Because as there is 18 seconds on the clock before Vortex actually spawns back to the world. To the world. All right. Well, to the Summoner's Rift. There you go. Correct. Correction <laughs> on my part. Top 10 Dinos are the one with Baron. So that actually allows them uh, that greater wave here so that they didn't have... Uh, they weren't able to lose the game right there. Uh-huh. But right now, your primary wave play option is the Zaya doesn't have Baron, and this is going to make it so much difficult for them to come in here in this game. Exactly. Uh, you're right. I mean, uh, look at that. Yurith will survive with a sustain, minions. but that's like four really giant minions. Um, anyway, uh, with that Baron, at least they get to live another day. But props to Liya for slowing the pace of the game, being very patient. I mean, when we saw them in their first match today, they seemed to be the type of team that likes to keep fighting. But this time yeah. around, they were patient and they played with their win conditions. And here's something that I haven't actually noticed. The Zaya is 1 and 4. And that's uh, a ton of damage oh, yeah. on the table for Top 10 Dinos. I'm not exactly sure what happened there other than that one time that she got caught out. But that's just super detrimental. And right now for Top 10 Dinos, they are the ones who have to stall out the half to get the uh, Zaya at least on even footing before they can look for these fights. So Lia, now the onus is on them to end out this game. You're right, it's uh, Liab's game to lose now. It's the complete opposite and now Den is hunting for Yurith. And at this point, looks like the recall is not going to push through. And uh, they're, they're going to stop the minion wave? Very smart here from the uh, back. Preventing the minion wave from reaching Europe, preventing her from continuing a split push. They're actually just going to push up and go for the inhibitor, <laughs> I think. I mean, the fact that that inhibitor is up means so much more than having it down. Kofi, though. Oh, Kofi. Going to kite, kite, kite. And looks like the stopwatch is in, and Den is going to be around the corner to Q in oh, to get that stun. And looks like that's going to be our shot down towards Bolfi. And at this point, maybe that's going to be another kill for Yurik. She's having the time of her life, and that's going to be a double kill. Meanwhile, it seems to me that Top 10 Dinos is distracting the up. Oh man, Yurik is pulling three times her weight right now. Oh. But she is the only reason why Top 10 Dinos has not lost this game. And Jones right now, super low, is in no place to contest for this bot side from the Oracle. Oh, great decision making. Whoa. And now they're aiming for Ceramid here, trapped inside this cage. And looks like that's going to be a shutdown. Three members gone. Two members are going to be tasked to defend the base. And Yurif, we have to give props to her again. She really tore apart the mantle of Liab. Why was Syndra there? Why was she between the Yorick and the Nautilus? That made absolutely no sense. And now Top 10 Dinos, they're right back in this game, right off the back of this Yorick. My oh my, these two teams have a lot of fighting spirit within themselves, but there's going to be another fight in. Let's see if this is going to be the chance for Liab to come back again as the tower might fall. Yummy, yummy, Vortex. 
And at this point, I go super low, and Fofi will be the next one, actually the last one. And that's still four members complete, and they will end the game. Well, oh, that's an absolute heartbreaker for Leah, man. Stalling the game out so far, only to lose the game thanks to a Yorick you didn't ban? That's insane! Oh, feels bad. Feels bad, man, but feels good, man, for Top 10 Dino. They were patient, they knew, despite, you know, them not having the best late game because uh, they 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 were already past their prime, but they kept their spirits up. They believe that they can outplay in terms of macro here uh, against Liab. Yep, two zero and zero is top ten dinos at the moment, but you have to think they're not very happy with you know this win and last win for that matter because you really have to know when you can force a fight. That's true. And they don't know this just yet, and I think they have to look at you know the vaults and they have to fix this issue before their next game if they want to continue in this tournament. Definitely, I mean they did learn a lot from the first two games that they had today. It's actually pretty amazing. That was so back and forth. And uh, it seems to me that uh, we're done for our game number three. We still have three more matches coming right up. But don't go away. We'll be right back.